Brooklyn, what are you doing here? Is this a new place? Yeah, this is nice. I mean, you could do something with this. You need... I don't know. Have you got some, some pictures or... Well, then do you know what time it is? I don't know. I mean... I just... I don't know. I just have to talk. God, I've got to talk to you, Harriet. Because this whole thing is good just... This could finish me, you know? Hey, hey, hang on. Look, talk to me. Okay? Tired. Look really tired. Yeah, I'm I'm wrecked. Look, this is not making any sense. Can you please just talk to me? I'm missing 24 hours. I've lost a day. I've woken up, you know, and I'm I'm near the beach and I'm sitting on this so, bench. So, and, so you've had and a, I'm a, a sun blackout. Come up and, and I'm watching the sun come up and I can't remember a damn thing. And I'm I'm terrified. Hello? Um, yeah, look, yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. I can be there. 30 minutes. Okay. <sighs> Shit, Lachlan, I'm so sorry. It's okay, I mean... Judy calls, it's, it's cool, it's... Look, how about you go home and get some sleep and call me tonight, okay? You promise me you'll call me tonight. I'm volunteering this statement in order to protect my standing as a solicitor in the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. It all sounds very ominous, Mr. Shell. What exactly did you want to say? I want to put on the record that I was in the Grove on Friday night, in the company of the deceased woman, Jude McLaren. And so were half the bloody lawyers in Sydney. You'll find witnesses to say that Jude and I spoke privately for something like 30 minutes, and they'll probably also say that we were drinking heavily. Would they be right? By my standards. And is that all, Mr Shaw? It may also have appeared as though we were flirting a little bit. Were you? Flirting with her? I've known Jude McLaren since she first moved to Sydney five years ago from Perth. For a time, our relationship was something as more than friends, but that was all in the past. How long ago in the past? That's not really relevant. Well, let me ask you this, Mr Shaw. Jude's fiancé, Mr Adam Christie, was he aware that you were cozying up to his fiancée for 30 minutes or so? I couldn't tell you, but I don't know. Were you aware that he and Jude had a fight and that she left about midnight? No. Well, what were you chatting about? Well, I can't recall the detail. Let me help you out. Perhaps old time, small talk? Yeah, just small talk. Just small talk. Mm. Anyway, we finished our conversation and shortly afterwards I left the premises alone and on foot and I went home to my place. And basically that's all I have to say. Hello? You made me promise to call you this evening. Uh, yeah. Wh why did you come and see me this morning? What did you want from me? Instinct, I don't know. Self-preservation. I mean, I knew the shit was going to hit the fan. How did you know that Jude was dead? I uh, didn't get a chance to tell you what I knew. Remember, the phone rang. Yeah, well, how did you know that she was dead before I did? A reporter, friend of mine. Picked up the original report of the police radio. Got Jude's name from one of the uniforms at the scene. I mean, cops will do that for money. He knew I knew Jude, phoned me. Now I owe him a favour. Why? Do, do you think I'm a suspect? What, am I a... Am I a person of interest? No, no, I... No, I wouldn't be talking to you if I thought that. Thank you. I needed to hear that. You're welcome. Joe, did the door knock? Next door neighbour says she heard shouting late Friday night. Looks like Lachlan teamed up again with Jude after they left the grove. How'd they know it was Jude? Because the next door neighbour says she heard Lachlan shouting, Get out of my life, Jude. Excuse me, Lachlan Shaw, Detective Joe Hill, Kingsway Police. Sorry to butt in, pal. I was wondering if you could confirm something for me, Mr Shaw. Friday night about 1am, your neighbour reports hearing an argument in your apartment. They said that it was your voice and a woman's. Sergeant, this is wildly inappropriate. I'll have you disciplined for this. You would be, sir. Can we do this somewhere else? Happy to, Mr Shaw. After you. 
See you around, Christy. I spoke. We searched your premises, Lockie. Every single inch of it. Found evidence of a struggle. What do you think, Detective Rami? A fight? Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Sean, what would be the story with the smashed ornaments in your rubbish bin? And what would be the story with the cracked glass on the coffee table? And what would be the story with this shirt, which we found in your dryer? It's one of your shirts, and I'm suggesting it was the shirt that you were probably wearing on Friday night. But unfortunately for you, you need some stronger washing powder. Those hard shift bloodstains, they can be a nuisance, can't they? I'm putting everything I've got on it that matches Jude's DNA. So what's the story, Lockie? Hmm? Are you still going to deny that Jude was in your flat on Friday night? No, Jude was in my flat. Well then what's your story, Lockie? Come on, you come in here off your own volition, you volunteer a statement, then you only tell us half of what's going on. Home half an hour, a bit more. Jude arrives, she's drunk. What does she want, sex, coffee? I've told you that we had a previous relationship some years before. I don't know, I suppose Jude was still holding out for something. You weren't? I wanted us to stay mates. But every time we'd talk or have a good time, I'd think, okay, great, we've done this. But Jude would just want to pick up the threads again. So she turns up at my place, she's very drunk, and she's ready for, I don't know, a fight, a party, it could go either way. You try and pick it. So she was stalking you, is that what you're saying? And when I didn't want to play, she starts throwing things. Now, these are things that she's bought me, uh, ornaments, vases, <laughs> to get my attention, I suppose. She cuts herself on a smashed piece of vase and I try to help her, I get blood on my shirt and look, I just tell her that she should go to a medical centre. More abuse and she leaves. Well, that all sounds very plausible. Detective Rami? Though it doesn't explain why he didn't tell us the whole story when he volunteered his statement. I was very clear in my mind that I hadn't harmed her. How do you know you hadn't harmed her? Excuse me? How do you know you hadn't harmed Jude? From what I've been told, Lockie, you've had a blackout. You've admitted to missing 24 hours. So how do you know, Lockie, what you did or didn't do in that 24 hours? What we know for certain, mate, is that you were one of the last people to see Jude alive. Lockie. How are you? Good. I think we have some unfinished business from yesterday. Don't you? Ground rules. Everything that you say to me is on the record. I'm a detective and I'm investigating a murder. If you don't accept the ground rules, I'm going to call a halt to this right now. I have one priority, and that is to find whoever killed Jude McLaren. So I do this my way, or nothing. Accepted? Accepted. Good. So how are we going to do this? Where you and Jude were sitting on Friday night? That's right. What time? 10, 11, I don't... I wasn't in good shape. So? Okay, so how do you wipe the slate clean? It was nine months on that trial. Double murder, sexual mutilation. You know, thousands of pages of sickening detail. All that shit from the, from the sewer that you just want to flush out of your head and forget. How do you do that? You, you did forget, didn't you? You lost 24 hours. And that scared you. When you came to my apartment... Of course it scared me. It scared the shit out of me. As your colleague so neatly observed, maybe, just maybe I did do something to Jude when I was out of it. If I can't remember...